Hi everyone, I'm Alex. Today's cavalry tutorial is all about the new shortest path shape. Okay, so shortest path is a brand new feature in cavalry and it's already a ton of fun. I'm really loving it. Here's a couple of examples that I've used it for. So leaves on a vine sort of effect and they blow in the wind, which is cool. We've also got this venom looking one, but I'm also already using it on some artwork for a release with my band that we've got coming up next week. I even went through and did a quick animated redesign of the logo using the shortest path. So it's cool. Uh, I can already see a lot of uses for it. But anyway, as usual, starting a brand new composition. Then we'll use control or command full stop and we'll just search for the shortest path. There is a little description there of what it's doing. So it creates a path between start and end points. Create a text shape for now. Let's very quickly set that up. Blah, blah, blah. Cavalry, just reposition slightly and make it a different color. Okay, so load the shortest path into the attribute editor. And we'll try and explain this the best I can. So on the shortest path, if I drag the text shape onto the input shape here, we'll swap to your hierarchy so you can see it. It's created a path between two points on the text shape. Those points are determined by the start and end travel on the shortest path. For example, if I just created a red ellipse, just shrink it down a bit and then say on the ellipse, I was to right click, add behavior, pathfinder onto the position. Position has a travel percentage, so if we add the text shape as the input shape for the pathfinder and we were to scrub travel, the ellipse will travel along a path over the text shape. And this is effectively what the shortest path is doing as well. If I go back onto the shortest path and I just start scrubbing end or start travel, you can see that one point is scrubbing along, trying to find all the points on the path and the same for the start point. So in the simplest way, you're picking a point A and a point Z, start, end. You might notice though that if start is zero, end is one, the line disappears. All you need to do here is just increase the search radius. So check search radius and then just increase that. It will make sure that it can actually reach that far. But anyway, back to the point at hand, just gonna get rid of the pathfinder there and the ellipse. In order to make something like say this first example where the path flows in and flows out, we need to open the shortest path and we're gonna increase the count to something like 50. You won't immediately see anything yet because what that's done is that's created 50 lines from <laughs> point A to point Z. We need to stagger or randomize that. So go ahead, right click end travel, add behavior, stagger and instantly you can see it split up those endpoints. Now, if you are like me and using a text shape, you might have more than one word. So you might need to come down here and use levels and check this between characters, words or lines, but we've got one word, so we'll just leave it on word. Go ahead and move the start travel to a point that you like. I'm sure you'll find something that suits whatever you're making. For now, I'm not too worried, so I'm just gonna leave it there. But the only problem now is that these are straight lines and the ones I had were curved. That's really easy. Just go to deformers on the shortest path, add a bevel, and you can change the bevel to whatever you feel, and this starts to curve out those lines. But what I also did on the shortest path is I went to the stroke tab, I increased the thickness quite a bit. We'll go for something like 15. I then added the tapered width. I changed the end width to 0% and then enabled double taper. And you can see where we're at now. If you want to change it up a little bit more, you can just start changing the count and increasing the amount of lines you've got or decreasing them or even going down to the distribution or the points distribution on the shortest path. And you can start playing with where the path is going to find points in between its start and end. I'll try and explain this as quick as I can, but if I was to right click the points distribution, reveal the generator quickly, I'm going to create another red ellipse. We'll shrink that down a bit, duplicate that red ellipse. And I'm going to connect the random generator that we revealed from the shortest path to the distribution and replace that. So if you now load that random and start shrinking the height or increasing the width, you'll start to notice some of these points here. Let's shrink the ellipse a little bit further just to show you. If I disable the bevel, I think it'll show you a bit easier. Yep, 
So you can see like this point here, uh, the path has gone to it and it's moving along there. So anyway, back to what we were doing. I'm just gonna undo all that we just did. The only thing really left to do on this was to edit the path travel so it looked like it was growing. To do that, go onto the stroke tab, come down to trim, and then just edit the end. And you'll wanna keyframe that. Let's say we'll keyframe frame 20, keyframe end, just click that little key, go up to 60, all the way out. And then we'll go to frame 80, keyframe start as well, and we'll, we'll get it to travel through. As well as this, I'm also going to keep running the width. I'm going to start at zero width and we'll grow it up to 15. Keyframe that key and back down to zero. And this should look like that. However, just a quick dip into the other things, just to show you a few more bits you can do with this. I'm just going to create a background shape. I'm going to put it to the back. We'll make it We'll make it black and we'll change the color of the stroke on the shortest path as well just for now we can click on the particles button up in the shelf and i'm gonna set the emitter shape to input shape i'm gonna add a background shape in there so this will emit particles from the entire background i'm also going to change the initial speed on the particle emitter to zero and the gravity to zero on the particle shape just so that the particles aren't too wild out the door Particles, there's a lot going on. They're gonna need a tutorial all of their own. So I'll go into that in another video, but for now we'll, we'll just use it for plain and simple. So anyway, right click modifiers on the particle shape, add a modifier. We're gonna add a flow field modifier. And now when we press play, you'll see, yeah, particles are popping in and slowly traveling around the screen. We don't actually need to see the particles for what we're doing. So I'm just gonna hide them. And then on the shortest path, I'm going to change the points distribution to particle and I'm going to drag the particle shape onto there. When we press play, you're going to see that this is popping around all over the place. So at this point, what you want to do to change this, because you're going to get very, very varied results, is just lower or increase the search radius on the particle shape. And then when you press play, you see you'll start getting some really wild sort of shapes that are just really organic looking, but it's super cool. As for the other example, this vine looking one, I'm not going to go into too much detail, but I'll show you how to add new shapes to the shortest path if you don't already know how to do that. So we'll go back in here. I might I'll change the background so it's brighter so it, we can see. And um, we'll change the shortest path stroke. We'll change it to like a, a brown sort of wood thing. And then I'm gonna be really cheeky. I'm gonna go back into my leaf example. I'm just gonna copy the shape that I used, which was this into this other composition so I don't have to make that again. Let's paste that in there. I'm going to duplicate it. Uh, we're gonna to need to move this above everything. I'm just gonna put it at the top. On the duplicator, I'm gonna change distribution to shape points. And then we're gonna add the shortest path as the distribution shape and we got leaves. I probably should have removed the particle shape first. Let me just kill that particle shape and the emitter and the flow field and then reset the points distribution on the shortest path back to random. And we're gonna have to find a point where we could do this again. Well, I mean, you can already see we've got <laughs> dynamically changing leaves and branches now. Forever blown away. It's so cool, like just the amount of weird different things that you can just do. So probably gonna wanna come down to level mode and we'll change this to characters. Although this is starting to get a bit noisy. Let's lower these. Yeah, so I've just lowered character and just moved the travels around a bit. You're gonna to wanna to play around a bit until you find something that you like with this. Maybe change the width of the stroke, lower it down. And then the leaves were blown in the other scene, weren't they? So I just need to go onto the duplicator, right click shape rotation, and the old favorite, the oscillator. We've added that. That will make them sway a bit. Just go onto the oscillator. We'll have a stagger of five just to move it. Increase some of these minimum and maximum fields just to make it a little bit different. Voila. That was my very brief introduction to the shortest path shape. Hopefully you've got some ideas to start playing with it yourselves. I'd love to see what you're making. There is an ever growing list of things I'm realizing need tutorials. So I'll try and go into cameras as that's been requested by Mario and also particles as I've realized in this also need a bit of cover. 
please like and subscribe if you liked it. It will help me to keep making more of these and I can help you hopefully. With any luck, you've left here today learning something new and I'll see you on the next one. I know nothing. I